Hey guys, how you doing? This is Paul, and shotgun mics are one of the easiest ways to get good audio to go alongside your video. All you have to do is mount them on the camera, plug them in, and you're good to go. And today I have with me three of the best budget shotgun microphones, and I'm gonna be comparing them all to find which one's best. So the three mics that I'll be comparing today are the Rode Video Mic Go, the Rode Video Micro, and the Tackstar SGC 598. The Video Mic Go was released by Rode in 2013 to act as a simpler and cheaper option to the popular Video Mic Pro. And late last year, Rode released the Video Micro as an even cheaper and smaller microphone. And then there's the Tackstar SGC 598, simply one of the cheapest options out there, coming in at around $25 to $30. All three microphones are built very well, but the all-metal body on the micro makes it the most solid out of the bunch, and its small form factor makes it the obvious choice if you're concerned about portability. They also all come with a windshield, but the one included with the micro is more of a dead cat style of filter, which is more effective in windy situations, but also adds a little bulk to the unit. The Video Mic Go and the Micro are designed to be a plug and play device, so they have no settings to mess with. And while this is a great feature for beginners, it doesn't offer the control that advanced users might be looking for. But the Tackstar, on the other hand, has a few options to mess with. You're able to boost the sensitivity up by 10 decibels if you need a little more volume, and it also has a low pass filter designed to get rid of the low bass frequencies to filter out background noise, and I haven't tested either of these features yet, so I'll see how they perform in just a minute. You'll also notice that the Tackstar is the only mic with an on-off switch, and that's because it's the only mic that's internally powered meaning it's running off a AA battery. And there's ups and downs to this feature because on one hand, it doesn't drain the power from the camera itself like the Go and Micro do, but you have to constantly make sure to turn it on and off, and it's just a little annoying to work with. Both the Micro and the Mic Go use a Rycoat Liar suspension system to reduce the handling noise, which works perfectly. However, the Tackstar uses a rubber band system, which isn't bad, but I really prefer the Rycoat mount just for the sake of simplicity. So now let's finally get into the most important part of the video, the sound tests. Each microphone is going to record into the Tascam DR05 recorder, just because every camera processes audio a little differently, so I thought it would be a more accurate representation of the sound to just record into the Tascam rather than straight into the camera. And again, I haven't tested any of these microphones, so I really don't know what to expect, but I'm gonna try them out in just a second and hear how they sound and come back to give you guys some of my opinions. Okay, right now you're listening to the Rode VideoMic Go recording into the Tascam DR05 recorder, and I'm about a foot away from the microphone right now. Now all of these files will be completely unedited, so you're hearing exactly how the mic will sound. Moving on, now I'm recording on the Rode Video Micro about one foot away, and I'm interested to see how this compares to the Video Mic Go, because it's about $40 cheaper and just a fraction of the size. And now you're hearing the Tackstar SGC 598, again about one foot away, and try to pay attention to see if you can hear any background noise, because right now the low pass filter is off, but I'm gonna turn it on in just a second and see if it makes a difference. Now the low pass filter is on, so see if you notice any difference in background noise or sound quality. Okay, now we're back on the video mic go, but this time we're about five feet away, which is probably a more realistic distance for a shotgun mic. And this is a test of the video micro about five feet away, recorded with the same exact settings for a fair comparison. And finally, this is the Tackstar SGC 598, once again about five feet away, and remember that this does have the 10 decibel boost, but I'm gonna save that for the 10 foot test. All right, now this is the last test for the video mic go. This is about 10 feet away now, which is probably about the maximum distance that you'll want to use a shotgun mic. And now you're hearing the video micro recording from the same distance of 10 feet, 
on the same exact settings. And here is the Taxstar SGC598 with the 10 decibel boost off. And I'm gonna turn it on in just a second. And now you're hearing the SGC598 with the 10 decibel boost turned on. Now I'm gonna go listen to all of these files and tell you guys what I think. All right, after listening to all the files, I think I've got a pretty good idea of how these mics perform. So in the first test, all three mics performed very well and my personal favorite was the Rode Video Micro. I think the mic go and the Taxstar sounded a little echoey, but the low pass filter on the Taxstar did help a little bit. Now in the five foot test, you could hear the echo in all three mics, but once again, I think the micro did the best job and just sounded the most crisp and clear out of the three. And finally, none of the mics performed too well in the 10 foot test, but as I mentioned, that's really pushing a shotgun mic to its limits. However, I still believe the micro performed the best once again, as it minimized the echo and distortion. And while the 10 decibel boost on the Taxstar did technically work, it just increased the hissing noise in the audio and further distorted the sound, so I don't really see myself using that again in the future. So in conclusion, I think it's pretty obvious that the Micro was my favorite out of the three. It has the best build quality, it's by far the most portable, and it even surprisingly has the best sound quality. Now if you're on a tight budget, I think the Taxstar is a very solid option as well, in my opinion, it performed just as good, if not better, than the Video Mic Go, which is the only mic out of the three that I cannot recommend simply because it was the most expensive, but it didn't really stand out from the other mics. So that's about it, guys, for this video. Thank you so much for watching, and if you want to check out any of the mics mentioned in this video, there'll be links to all of them in the description down below. And if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe for some more content coming soon. Thanks.